You're listening to the New Old Heads podcast, shot live every Tuesday at twitch.tv slash new old heads and released every Thursday at noon via bringingdowntheband.com. The show is brought to you by Coleman Dental, Printfinity, Indie CD and Vinyl. Support the show directly by becoming a member at patreon.com slash new old heads. Episode 318 of the New Old Heads. You know, the pre-Christmas edition. We're hanging out and uh, we're glad you're hanging out with us. Yeah. Gonna go ahead and just say hello to the fellas real quick. Uh, I'll start from the person furthest from me. Uh, my man, Jake Diff. How you feeling? Stay tasty. Okay. I am here. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, we still don't have the whole crew together because uh, uh, our good brother, Major Seventh, is... Uh, I don't know. I guess he's, he always says when people are out there handling grown folks business. So I'm going to assume he's doing the same. Uh, so we got Red August, who's uh, been away for a while, but he's back. Back. OK. All right. How you doing, man? Um, I'm good. Uh, up close and personal <laughs> in there. Yep. OK. Well, just glad to have you back, man. We really, Thanks, uh, man. Uh, you know, uh, miss your presence. You know, I, I miss the back and forth between you and uh, Major Seven. Uh, it is always uh, comical. At least to me. I don't know how comical it is to him because you'd be getting on him. But it's all good. Uh, shout out my man Longevity right here, oh, you know. I forgot yeah. about myself. Yeah, yeah. I was, you know, like I said, we didn't do it in the same order. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, we're just, uh, we're just moving the way we got to move today. Yeah. Thanks for shouting me out. <laughs> yeah. I feel all right. Yeah. Okay. That's what's so, up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, as we start off, um, is there anything that, you know, you guys have seen in the, in the news? Uh, Maybe uh, checked out on, on on various sites that has kind of sp- sparked your interest. Anything that we wanted to talk about as we start uh, start the show? What's up, Jackson? I've seen a couple things. Yeah. What yeah. are a couple of things that couple, you've seen? A couple of things. Um, the first thing I saw, Tory Lanez making oh, situation that's messy. going on. It's getting it's getting weird. It's getting yeah, it's, very Ju- uh, Judge Judy ish. Yeah. <laughs> right now. Um, it seems like a whole lot of lying going on. <laughs> I've. No idea what's going on with it though. Have you got? I mean, have you got actually followed? She got it? shot in her pinky toe. I mean, I, I'm familiar. <laughs> I'm familiar with that portion. And I evidently, guess. it's looking like Tori may not have been the one that shot her, like she initially yeah. was saying. Is uh, it really though, or it kind of is because there's a lot of stuff being left out that is now coming to the forefront, and it's kind of like, oh, really? So what type so of that's what's going what on? Type of thing. Like she's saying that she didn't get in a fight with this girl. Where there were witnesses that saying, no, you absolutely did get in the fight with this girl. Yeah. Mm. So they're saying the girl initially or uh, had gun uh, residue. powder residue yeah. on her hands. So obviously, if she's the one with gun powder residue on her hands, and she's pleading the fifth a whole lot right now, too. She's saying. Talking about Megan? No, the other, the other girl. Yeah, the other. Her, her, I guess, ex-best friend. Ex-best friend. They haven't uh, hung see. out since that night. And it's kind of like, come on, man. Some. There's a lot more in that water than uh, was initially thought to have been. So. She did. She did lie, or someone lied and said that they were offered a million dollars not to talk. I think it was the same. <laughs> that same girl. Same girl, yeah. And then also they didn't find um, Tori's DNA on the gun. It was someone else's. It was a female's DNA on the gun, which... That girl. Right, so... There's a lot of weird things coming up. It's just, it's very, it's, it's, so it's not to as turn cut to a and dry, I guess. Right. What yeah, you're yeah. Well, this just, you know, when we talk about things like this, it just lets you know that we should probably, you know, there's been so much speculation and no, there's so much things that just as the public, we're not privy to. And yep. when, and this was what, two years ago almost, if not more than that. And Probably every three, cause yeah, everyone has, the pandemic. yeah, and everyone has had all these, you know, of course, you got to, you know, protect Megan Thee Stallion and like, well, Tory Lanez and this, that and the third. And we've they, we've really vilified him. Mm-hmm. And some, you know, this is when I knew something was up is they offered him a plea deal. Now, of course, you know, some for some for PR, if he'd have taken a plea deal, you know, for some people it's like, see, I knew he did it. But then, you know, they take those those gun charges in California very, very seriously. It's not like if you yeah. get caught in Atlanta or even Indiana. You know, I'm not just trying to, uh, or Georgia rather, you know, as far as how they view possession of handguns, because they don't really don't play. You got to go through hell and high water to get a handgun permit in places like New York or, uh, or California. You know, I always, and the thing is, I was like, have they, have they said whose gun it was? Like, I think, I thought that was going to clear up a lot. We just find so. out whose gun it was. I haven't heard anything about whose gun it that's, is. That's, that's the thing I was like, was, when are we going to get to that? You know, I've, but, 
Hmm. Um, you know, and the, and the thing is, this is kind of a, a lesson in PR for, for, for artists when things like this happen. I know you're trying to engender goodwill, but like Megan the Stallion, she has been caught in several lies. You know, when she went on Gail King, she was like, oh, no, I, I didn't have a that. relationship with him. We never, you know, were intimate. And she acted mm. like she didn't know what the word intimate mean <laughs> uh, or meant, rather. And then when she gets on the stand, you know, it comes out in the I wash that, uh, yeah, they had, you know, had a little thing going on. And she knew exactly what intimate meant. Yeah. So, um, you know, keep your mouth shut until you get to court. Intimates. Uh, they have really good pastries. <laughs> Adderman's. In- yeah, whatever they're called. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought it was Intimates. It no. might be. When the whole Ukraine thing, everybody was a specialist in international uh, diplomacy when Ooh. it was, uh, or, la- or when it was Brittany Griner who had got released, everybody all of a sudden, you know, they're an expert in that, and now they're an expert in who's snitching and who's not, you know, with this whole thing in Atlanta. It's, it's like as soon as they said, oh, yeah, Gunner's going to come on home, they'd be like, oh, he must have snitched. And I'm like, a questionable history of uh, doing some similar type of things. I'm not saying he necessarily snitched, but the way they him. the way they were packaging him, getting out, and him saying yes, sir, and no, sir. Yeah, that it kind of sounded like uh, <laughs> <laughs> he might have went a certain type of way or one side of the coin. But I mean, that ain't none of my business, man. Yeah. So my whole thing is, that if you're involved in some in a situation. And you know what you're involved in. You know the the repercussions and what can and can't happen. Then you need to be willing to take that that chance. When it when it when you was making money, it was cool. You know when everything was all glitz and glamour, and you're right. riding around in a a phantom or whatever kind of foreign car you decided you wanted. It was all good then. But as soon as you get caught up and you knew all of this stuff was going on, now you want to sing. That's that's out of line. That's where I'm at with it. If if you know what's going on and you're part of that that type energy and situation, then absolutely not. You're supposed to you're supposed to take that fall. That's that's what you signed up for. But I don't know. Did Gunner really? I mean, maybe he might have known they was doing something, but then he's like, "Well, I'm here to make music, and that's none of my business." Well, you need to get off that label or stay out of those spaces. You don't ride in cars with <laughs> yeah, certain mean, people. You don't do songs with the man talking about pushing P. And then you push him, please. Ooh. So, I mean. <laughs> interesting. Look, uh, you know, and, they, and, and you know, there's the whole thing, snitches uh, get stitches. But, look, them, uh, them, them stitches go away in three or four weeks. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, them 30 years ain't going nowhere. Nah. So, I mean, there, there's a code that goes with it. Like, if there, there are innocent bystanders that aren't necessarily included. Civilians, in, if we, exactly, what we would call them. Because they're not involved in that type of life. You know what I'm saying? And technically, if you're not involved, you're not supposed to know anything anyway. They ain't supposed to be telling other people what's going on. Because they can't, they wouldn't, wouldn't know anything, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. if somebody comes to me, they generally say the less you know, the better off for you. Because if I can't tell you anything, then That's that. I can't be incriminated. And I can't incriminate anybody else as well. Plausible deniability, I think, is the term. Yep. Um, I just mind my own business. I just, I mean, that would be the route that I take. Like, even if I knew. There were people doing stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't get involved, but I also shut the hell up. Like, I just, you know, I mean, there's no reason for me to go out saying anything about stuff I don't know or or like speaking on things I don't know about. So I'm just going to shut up and just mind my own business. Exactly. That's the way to go. Look, I told y'all several episodes uh, ago, don't do any crime around me. Um, because <laughs> they come into my cell, I'm be like, I'm be on the first 48 with my hands doing all like this. You know, that's that's when they, that's the telling pose. Uh, <laughs> no, the telling pose is when they got a burger and fries and a oh yeah, when they bring fries drink sitting in front of. They've them. been messing with that that bologna sandwich and and that one or two cookies they give you a day, and the, you come in there with uh with a with a number three or four. Oh, super size. Oh yeah, you double and tripled up with bacon on it. Didn't gonna do a scene where he was. Snitching? Yeah, it yeah. was on Crime Stopper. That's why I'm saying his <laughs> past <laughs> doesn't really help him. And he was saying that in that situation that he wasn't snitching. But mm-hmm. he was saying, well, I was saying my cousin didn't do it or blah, blah, blah. I mean, you're on camera. Not say yeah. Yeah, you anything. Don't say all. anything. Like, don't say there? anything that's going to incriminate you in either which way. So this actually kind of brings up one of our first <clears throat> topics. I guess we can kind of jump into it because this is kind of part of it. So the question was posed 
uh, it's one of our topics, is why is Gunna snitching conversation so relevant in hip hop music talk? I mean, partly mm. because Outside of the obvious. There's songs, I mean, there's songs that talk about and address snitching. I mean, you got Jay Z's, it was all good just a week ago. You got, uh, what's the uh, Pusha T when, uh, sorry, blank, I'm coming. Oh, yeah, oh, I want to, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm like, trying to come home. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to come home. Yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, it's. It's one of them codes of the streets where snitching. I mean, it's even before it was hip hop related. It was back in the day, old gangsters, you know, they would get fingers and hands and thrown off a bridge for but snitching. But everybody snitches. Everybody exactly. snitches. Like, because, you know, they'll say, oh, the, you know, the Italian gangsters don't do that. I was like, do you know who Sammy the Bull Garano yeah, that's, is? That's why they have you know a protective. Henry custody? Hill is. That's what, that's what witness protection is. If people. Like and plus, the person who always tells you not to snitch is usually the person at the top of the food chain, and he's telling you that because he ain't got nobody to snitch on. <laughs> you know, but as it relates to hip hop, this is this is what's unfortunate, and I you know I wish we could get further away from this because and and it, I'm not I mean, it's not as the same as it was, but at one point it seemed like being in hip hop, and if you certainly you're going to do a certain category of hip hop, a prerequisite to you getting in. The rap game was the crack game, you know. Because at one point in time, you had to have money. So that was the money yeah. using to fund the music career. Yeah, there was no way you could get in an actual studio. It wasn't like when you just had to have a laptop. You could buy it and go to Guitar Center and get a, and, and you could come out and produce something that sounds clean enough to be on the radio or, or to broadcast or play in a club. You know, somebody had to believe in you. <laughs> and somebody <laughs> with some money had to believe in you to put up the money for studio time and to get some vinyl pressed up it wasn't just like you hit the button and you're um you know and your music is there for the you world you couldn't put you know? an mp3 out in the, the atmosphere for everybody to download <laughs> you know but i mean I, I mean that's why i think certain rappers we bring them up so much just because it's almost to say hey look you can make it without having that prerequisite of you know that's why we bring up j cole that's why we bring up kendrick even that's why we bring up Drake. And if you want to go back before that, I think one of the people that and I'm not just saying this because I'm from St. Louis, it made it, you know, cool to be yourself and not talk about, you know, what you were doing in the streets was Nelly. I don't know, man. His first single was well, a whole lot of being in the streets. It was if you listen <laughs> close enough. <laughs> It was, you know, because it really, yeah, street sweep, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, but that might be a bad example. That man. might be a bad example. <laughs> that might be a bad example. But the thing is, I didn't, you know, no, being from St. Louis, I knew a little bit. But like when you would, when they interviewed Nelly, they talk. He would talk about how, like, you know, he played baseball, and you know, he was, you know, he went to U City High School, and you know, he's all about the music. You know, a lot of people didn't know until his behind the music came out <laughs> that he was really out here in these streets. You know, he he might have alluded to it, but it was still some happy-go-lucky type stuff. Uh, you know, we all know what Jay Z, how Jay Z came up. We all know how Biggie came up. Even yeah, if it was, even if it wasn't, they wasn't quiet about it. Yeah, they wasn't. You know, it. They, you know, even even if people who weren't really a part of it, they might have said, "Yeah, I was outside." You know, because Nas wasn't. He he didn't do that. You know, um, but he was. Pretty much around it, yeah. Mob similar deep, like, I don't, similar I don't know like a Tupac. That. Tupac never talked about necessarily selling drugs or anything like that, but he did give you a, a whole lot of insight on what was going on in the streets, right? Not necessarily from his personal experience, but from his perspective. Mm, yeah, yeah. So I think that's you know when we talk about why is this whole idea of snitching, unfortunately. And depending on how you you view it, fortunately, because people were able to transition out of that street life and move into something more positive and create an actual life for themselves. But, you know, a lot of what hip hop, especially if you were from the 90s, was so tied to what people were doing in the streets. It's just, you know, it, it's kind of unfortunate that like the street life and, and, and music have become so intertwined. And it still is that way. Yeah. I mean, you know, this isn't the first case where you know of since we've even had this show where we've talked about somebody who got caught up and snitched and snitching is relating to crime essentially and crime is related to stories that a lot of the hip hop artists are It's from. not even all all from the streets so like even think back as a kid oh you're a tattletale you're telling you know what i'm saying mm. it's always been frowned upon to tell period for sure based in any situation so if we're playing together 
and I got hurt and you did it, I'm supposed to not tell on you. I'm supposed to suck it up and be cool and go on about yeah. my day. Or I'm going to bribe you essentially. Okay, I'm not going to tell if you buy me a candy bar. Yeah, but no, so it starts early and it just transitions to different points in life. I mean, at, at that point, it's innocent. Even parents will tell you, why are you always telling all exactly. the time? Because yeah, my dad, he mm-hmm. would say, even if we got in trouble, like it's yeah. that same situation, and he would come to the person that told, stop snitching, stop telling. Stop telling. Yeah. And it's, so it's it, not stop telling the truth. Right. <laughs> it's not necessarily rooted in street life stuff, but just, when it moves to street life stuff, it's more so if you're going to participate in this game, then one of the, the crown jewels and rule is not to tell. Right. So it's essentially once you get involved in that, that's the first passage essentially you say, okay, I'm not going to tell. But that's the first thing people run out. Yeah, but I think it's also, it is intertwined with that because a lot of the stuff that we're talking about related to snitching in hip hop culture is related to crime and somebody snitching on yeah. somebody. You know what I mean? So it's like inherently a part of it. If there was no crime aspect involved in it, nobody would really care about the snitching because it'd be like, oh man, you told on me because I ate the Reese cup. You know, like nobody cares. It's a big deal as a kid though. It is as a kid, <laughs> but <laughs> sometimes it's a big deal as an adult. <laughs> yeah. Which, yes. you know, if that but, bag get low and somebody eat the last one, it might be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I feel like it's inherently is as long as, I mean, it's, it's just a part of the culture. For better or worse, it's like when you're not when you're not the one in the, in the position to do it. Er, no one wants you to do it until you're in that position and you're like, I want to go home. Right? Yeah, I don't. Wanna, I'm not. I, yeah, I do exactly. not want to spend Christmas yeah. in Fulton County Jail. This ain't it. Yeah. Like, yeah. and I'm not in. It's different. I can't, when it I'm, better. better decisions. Yeah, yeah, better decisions. And you know, they say, oh well, they can't hold what Gunner said in court against any of the other defendants. That's what they say. That's what they say, but, you know, I mean, like I said, if you said it's not mine, <laughs> you know, it, you, and <laughs> like I said, if it's not mine, if, if, if it was the situation I described earlier, I said it's not mine, uh, and I, it, this is, my paperwork says it's not mine. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, that's a gang. It's not mine. Uh, now you got to figure it out. Now, now you, only, it's, it's, you only have to figure out between these three. Yeah. I'm not saying you helping. No, it's a slippery slope. But you it sound a little bit like it's you helping. The, the, the easiest and the uh and honestly the best decision you could ever have is if you're in a situation to where you think you may be an organ organization that uh may come into question at one point in time, mm-hmm. you probably should not join that organization. <laughs> and you should probably best. not be affiliated or riding with, with individuals that may get you incriminated or brought up on charges. That's the easy answer to all of it but people always want to get to a fast dollar or want to be involved or want to seem tough and it's it's just weird man i don't know people got to make better life decisions i don't know like because sometimes you i you know i'll speak once again i'll speak for myself i've been in situations where i'm like no i gotta go i'm not and I, I, i'm just seeing what's going on i gotta go you know and uh this isn't and that's the right choice right? this isn't you know I, it's not like the feds are gonna be knocking down the door but i don't if something happens I don't want to be like, oh, well, you know, Jay Moore was there. Yeah, if, if I wasn't around and I don't have anything to talk about, then <laughs> Jay Moore left two yeah. hours ago. Was not there. Not there during any of that. Uh, when I was there, we were drinking punch. We were having a great time. We were watching Home Alone. It mm-hmm. was a Played a little time. Monopoly. You know oh, you'd have messed up, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you know you'd have messed up. <laughs> uh, apparently, Romeo uh, made a poem called Tree of Trauma. Yep. After that, Romeo continued with saying this, which this was my last straw pops trying to play the victim. I loved you so much that I followed you blindly for 30 plus years. You know, we've talked behind closed doors. You aren't the man who you paint to be. And why is it war? Because I refuse to follow your lead. You only want to protect your image, but the image isn't even real. And I don't need anyone to feel sorry for me, pops. I'm truly a man of God. If you are really a man of God, then you will prevail in the end. Even when I share my truth, I've tried to keep things in-house. You are addicted to social media and unfortunately use this as therapy. Uh, And when the world finds out about the finances outside of a gift or a car, I've never prepaid for anything I've accomplished as little Romeo. Uncle C and Silk know you only pay outsiders. Rightfully so, they'll speak good on your name. I'm at peace because I can now speak my truth and help others. Mom was always right. Your pride is, is everything. <laughs> what was up with the little cry dip? So I was, I was trying to. Uh, <laughs> you was trying to what? Trying to get the Romeo. Yeah, I, was, I, was your, I was curious. Brian McKnight on. I was curious if the, the Master P cry could, could voice come out. come out in Romeo. But mm. no, nah, I think it's a fail. So in the comments, he also followed up. All my siblings are broke, bro. Never had 
never even had money to afford college, and nothing is wrong with that. He just shouldn't pay in a certain life that isn't real. One big house to stunt is a minimum way of thinking. Well, I thought Lil Bow Wow, I mean, not Lil Bow I thought uh, Lil Romeo went to UCLA. Yeah, and I thought he, I, ICDC. And ICDC. He was it all makes like sense now. That's the only place he could go. <laughs> but he went to a <laughs> – right? he went to USC. He played yeah, with that's a, what I'm saying. Yeah, he got a scholarship. He played on the team. You didn't need no money for college. You got a scholarship. I don't know, man. This just seems like, hey, look, this just seems like gossip to me. Man, this is family so. business at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and them, unfortunately, being in the public eye, celebrities feel the need to air out everything and – and to kind of speak through, uh, well, this is my pain and this is my growth and woe is me. At the end of the day, a lot of it is because they were they were groomed with a silver spoon in their mouth, so they feel like they should have more. They should have more, exactly. Um, I don't know the details or how he was paid. I he had a show on Nickelodeon too. I know he had to get paid for that. Yeah, those unless. I mean, we don't know how the contract. I mean, because I mean, at the end of the day, they're signing Master P and Romeo. They don't get a group contract. You know what I'm saying? So Mm -hmm. he has to begin some residuals from somewhere. But I don't know the whole financial aspect of it. What I do think is sad that they have to let this play out in the public eye, versus if it's really a problem, you know, getting out to the bottom of it themselves. I mean. I don't know. So on the on the thing that I saw, Master P said, "The only reason I'm trying is that too, Martin. <laughs> you sound Martin. like Martin Luther King." <laughs> <laughs> now he said the only reason he brought it to social media is because, well, I mean, he got me saying that one. Uh, Romeo would he won't talk to him. he won't take his calls he won't talk to him so he said I'm I'm hoping that this will reach you, which I think is BS but whatever I mean you know it's gonna reach you yeah yeah. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I was gonna say you'd be surprised how some of them contracts are set up, and especially when it comes to like a parent, like parent, um, child mm-hmm, situation. Mm-hmm. And that same thing, I know it's just completely kind of like different, but this, this, the stuff that was going on with uh Britney Spears, like, yeah, she, well, she was crazy, like, they well, I mean, she, 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 was she crazy. wasn't getting paid for years, right? But they, they, they conditioned that under her. <laughs> being pretty much like Medicaid or something and crazy and unable to take care of herself. Mm-hmm. So her dad was the one uh, in control of everything uh, yeah. until she could prove essentially that she could take care of herself. But that's, I mean, I mean but that goes to show it's like, you never know how them contracts are set up, and especially in TV and, and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's lawyers are dirty. Like, yeah. it happens. But still, you know, you think, well, okay, this is his son. And then when you hear about certain other people who have issues with Masterpiece business, it's like, look, he did that to his son, so you're not special. I ain't yeah. never heard Silk say anything. Silk is a grown man. I haven't heard Silk say anything in well over a decade. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he dropped a song about three, four years ago. About oh. that? No, just a, uh, a song. Just, so he said something. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> <to him>. uh, <laughs> um, I, You know, I don't know. It's just like... I would like to think, you know, we're we're all, all all friends, man, not you know, family in a way. But I'd like to think if there was something that was really on, you know, any of your minds is like before you went to social media and made a whole video, especially if you made the video because it'd be all high quality <laughs> and shot from different angles. <laughs> so he's saying, so so Romeo's like, also, just give me a call, man. Hit me on a text. So Romeo's text, also man. saying in one of these comments that he's been taking care of his pops. He never touched any of the little Romeo money and that it all went to pay his IRS taxes. So maybe all that independent stuff that he was doing with no limit, maybe he didn't pay any taxes on it or something. I don't I mean, know. He went to jail, so he had to have paid something. Or he's snitching. <sighs> there we go. It's a circle of life, man. <laughs> the circle of uh, life. We'll see when the uh, No Limit documentary, documentary is done. I guess it's the uh, yeah. Netflix. Well, no, because they had one for. It was like the one that was on BET. It was like the five part parter. Mm-hmm. I didn't watch the whole thing because I, I just wasn't either. that interested. Uh, um, I don't know, but you know, uh, this is the entertainment industry. Everything is is a house of cards, not even glued together. You know, most m- most entertainers are broke. Especially in music, uh, maybe not in movies and TV, but you know most of these people, you know, don't have any money because think about it. Nobody like I saw Method Man on um, I think it was like Math Hoffa, and he's like, how are all these young boys flying private? Like I've been in the music industry for thirty years. I don't fly private. I've done movies. I've he said he, basically he's like they're not even selling nothing. <laughs> mm-hmm. How are they making all this money to fly private? And I I mm-hmm. thought it was a good. I ain't got the answers. I thought it was a good question. 
do you know, I, I think, it's, is this all a farce? Are they just trying to sell something to us? Because if Method Man, after, after you know, being out since 93, isn't flying private, and he does movies and has done world tours TV and everything shows, else in yeah. TV hey, Missy shows. Hey, Missy Elliott will tell you she'll take a coach. Bro, I'm not flying private. Yeah, I mean, I was like, doesn't. Too much money. Yeah, you got to pay for the yeah. fuel. And, it's no. like a twenty, thirty thousand dollars trip. <laughs> man, I'm cool. Easy. I'll get on Spirit. Come on, man. I will hey, man, never they, they get on Spirit. <laughs> first of all, hey, you no, can... you're right. I'll mess around and be a Spirit if I <laughs> get you. <laughs> get you a nice, uh, nice plane Here ticket and get to eat your little, uh, your interesting cookies or your, your interesting your, cookies or, or your pretzels, and then you get yourself like a little cran grape apple type juice to drink with it. Hey, man, you're yeah, living it, the life. Ginger ale, yeah. We yeah. can run the sponsors. Uh, let's yeah, run the sponsors. Yeah. We should do that. Run them. Thanks to our partners. Dr. Coleman of Coleman Dental is our go-to dentist. He's a longtime Indianapolis arts and music supporter located right in Broad Ripple. Printfinity is a screen printing shop based in Indianapolis, owned and operated by our own DJ J. Diff. Our good friends at Indie CD and Vinyl operate one of the best record stores in North America. Shop new and used in their site or visit them in person. And the best way to support the new old heads is to visit our Patreon and become a member for as little as three bucks a month. All details on newoldheads.com. Welcome back to the New Old Heads podcast where we talk about great, cool things. I want one of those AIs where I can like randomly just change my voice to like Joe Biden or something. I'm so sick of AI. I'm, like, yeah, how I'm do you just, feel about AI I'm artwork? I'm pissed about it. Can I say pissed on TV? Yeah, yep. I mean, if you Highly want... upset. Well, okay, I get it. Like, I get it. I get it, right? But... Mm-hmm. They're taking our jobs away. They're taking our jobs! <laughs> they, took our job. they took our jobs! They took your jobs! They took your jobs! They took your jobs! You're like, I'm trying to get this, I'm trying to get this voiceover money, but then you got <laughs> the AI, you just type it in, and they don't know the difference between short and long vowels a lot of times, though. I, uh, my new artwork for my new project? Yeah, saw that. AI. It, okay. I, Here's I, what I'll do, though. It looks nice. Here's what I'll do. It does look good. If you want to remake it, I don't. Then, then you but can listen. remake it. No, <laughs> no but it, it it looks good. I'm not saying that it's not it's not a dope. No, it's thing. amazing artwork. Yeah, I look, like, the AR stuff is amazing. But go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just not. I, I same thing. Like it looks it, it looks it, it looks great. My thing about it is is from my understanding, it takes from artists and it copies their styles. Mm-hmm. So when you put them in this generator, it has a database of all these different artists, mm-hmm. and it. It pretty much mimics these artists and creates this image. I've seen, I've seen uh, stuff like that where people have said, like, "Look at this is AI generated this for this person." Mm-hmm. So yeah. in that sense, I think is whack because it's still no, I can dig it. I can dig that. It's kind of like somebody emulating your beats, mm-hmm. and now all these beats are using the same style and sorry, chords. Sorry, that thing. That's already yeah. It is, like but done. still, yeah. a computer doing it. Apparently, that's how that R. Kelly uh, album was made. No, that R. Kelly was already out. The the AI art stuff is interesting. Now, the AI, like, uh, have you played with, like, Playground or Chat GPT and stuff like that? Mm-mm. I have no, never no, even no, heard no, of it. No. We'll talk about it after the show, I guess, because it's too much to get into here where I can't, like, display anything. But it's super really cool for content creating. Mm. They, have, they have it to where you don't even need copywriters anymore like you just pl- punch a bunch of stuff in ai yeah, programming that's will this kind of create content like yeah like, like words like people so are creating whole movies with it yeah so it's 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 literally like computers are literally taking over every single aspect like i used to think there was a time was like there's no way that a computer could replace an an, an artist like creative people are safe <laughs> nope not anymore and it looks very very good yeah <laughs> Like I'll somebody redid, game up. somebody Scott made game. a uh, Masters of the Universe movie, steals with AI, mm-hmm. and it looks like something that could have really came out. It's really? wild. It's yes, wild. I mean it's it does a really good job, like of of recreating. That's crazy. Look at that. Yeah, so I just typed in uh, on this thing called uh, Playground. And it was like write a description of a hip hop <laughs> podcast that features four people that love Star Wars and want to rap. About Rick and Morty on Tuesdays, <laughs> and it just and it wrote, wrote all of that that quickly. Yeah, welcome to the hey. hip hop podcast of the Galactic Four, a show dedicated to the combination of hip hop and sci fi culture. Our four hosts, each with a unique background in music, come together to discuss their favorite Star Wars flicks, rap about Rick and Morty on Tuesdays, and dig into all things hip hop. Wow, that's from great. from the latest bangers to classic tracks and everything in between. The Galactic Four will take you on a journey through the world of hip hop. So if you're looking for a podcast to get you through the day, 
look no further than the Galactic Four. Ma- That's scary Matrix. as hell. I'm sorry. He, I saw that he, happen. He, <laughs> he literally time. just put that in. Watch this yeah. up. The, what I can also do is I can come in here and I can say, "That's great. Can you give me ten uh, YouTube video ideas for this that also take into account great SEO and um, can potentially go viral?" All right. And hit submit here, and it'll say, "The Galactic Four rap battle, Star Wars, blah blah blah." So it's literally giving me all this. And it's and it's oh, and it's they're video numbering. ideas. They're video ideas, right? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is I, nice. I don't I don't like this. It's at the all. <laughs> we I don't are like in the matrix. All. So I told so you, man. so yesterday I made a video on bringing down the band where I took um. There's the Pusha T and Kanye West thing that we're probably not going to talk about, but oh yeah, the yeah. video that I posted on there where I literally I mean I made the video I put the the text together and the music and did all that stuff to it. But I literally went here and I said, give me 10 great YouTube uh, title ideas for this specific topic that can rank super high, that can get super. And then I was like, all right, cool. Now rank these again based upon this, the this. And I was like, cool. Now also take this copy right here and rewrite this description for me in great uh, SEO for YouTube so I can paste it in there. And it did all that stuff. And I was like, cool, give me 10 great keywords for it as well. So and I did all that stuff and I used it all on there and it <laughs> did pretty good. So, so people are literally going to be writing papers in uh, school with AI. Hey, so I think so I feel like the I, like I feel like I feel like the future of like at least this it's not going to yeah it's pretty crazy to think about right. What if it, what if it starts writing people's <laughs> lyrics? It, well, it already uh, does. That's right. Right, me Remember a that, song. The, uh, that <laughs> right little AI song. character dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, write me a song about snitching oh, on yeah, yeah, yeah. people that eat. Yeah. Too many Reese cups, all right? And I, it'll literally write a song. Oh, wait, 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 wait. In 16-bar format in the key of A minor for the chorus. That's ridiculous. All right? Better not do this. First one. That's crazy. Chorus. Ain't no snitching, ain't no telling, but I'm going to have to speak up on all these Reese's eating. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. It's not right, and I won't pretend. It's time we stop eating so many Reese's. You got a sweet tooth. I know, but you got to control it. Too many Reese is going to make you sick. It's a guarantee. You won't get away with it. I'm going to have to tell. It's, it's, time, to, it's time to stop. So here's what we can do, right? Uh, <laughs> this is real use, time experimentation. Yep, use, use those lyrics. Uh, use, s- those, uh, use similar lyrics, but make sure that the phrases rhyme. You know, rewrite it. So there, <laughs> y'all don't like this. I don't like this. There, 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 there is an app Mm-mm. out there yeah, already no. that it's um you basically plug in. I saw it over uh, Instagram, and this dude, he it was like a gift for his girlfriend, an anniversary gift or whatever, and he just punched in a bunch of like their memories stuff like that. And this thing wrote a song and then sang it to her. Yeah, and she's sitting there like, oh my god. Yeah, I'm just like, I feel like I feel like. It's going to be one of these things where I don't think it's going to eliminate like a, a ridiculous amount of jobs, mm-hmm. but, it's but, going to. but it's going to. And I think, for, for example, for the content creating stuff, if I'm a content creator on YouTube, this makes it, this kills a, a ton of like just cerebral work that I wouldn't want to do. Like coming up with titles. Like you can literally type in here, give me ideas for what a thumbnail should look like to go viral for this specific, specific thing. And it gives me ideas. So like even for the show, now I don't have to sit and think, all right, what is a good thumbnail for this? And what should it do con- combined with the top, you know, like the title and with the description and all this other stuff. So it, it does help in that aspect. Where does plagiarism come into play with that? With that, I don't think anything, at least as far as um, that particular portion, it's as far as writing, cats. as far as writing songs. I still be cats out here writing a whole rap album using AI. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably already happening in some. Yeah. I, I mean, we talked about that F and Mecca person, right? Yeah. So it was, yeah, uh, yeah. it's just, yeah. I mean, cause you know, once at one point this was science fiction. Mm-hmm. I remember there was some movie back in the day called electronic, like this dude bought this fancy computer and he spilled champagne on it and <coughs> came to life and <laughs> it was helping him. It was helping to my weird science. No, no. Trust me. I, I remember, remember, I remember weird science. Um, and like, it, and, but the computer got jealous of the fact that the dude had a girlfriend and he, and the computer was writing songs. I, it was one of those songs. If you had the good cable, it would come on like on, on a Wednesday. I think I know what you're talking. I remember that movie Mindbender that had uh, 
John Connor from Terminator 2 in it. He is playing his computer game, and the computer game was for real. That's called Brain Scan. Brain Scan. Yeah, That's yeah, I saw that. I'm going to call it Mind Bender. I don't know, but I nobody has ever heard of that movie whenever I bring that up. Yeah, Brain. I actually went to the movies to see that. Really? It was, yeah. It's a wild movie. It is. Like, super wild. And I've seen it like a bazillion times, mm-hmm. but, yeah. It's like the little weird, creepy dude was, like, killing people. Yeah. So, basically, instead of Skynet Ever. launching all the uh, nuclear bombs like in Terminator, it's going to be writing songs, bad raps. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. I, th- I think it's useful. I do see the benefit, but on the other hand... I see the detriment. Yeah, I, I feel like from I from didn't. a creative standpoint, from a creative creator level, you know, like even like as so you're an artist, right? Yeah, right? I feel like you should figure out how to utilize this as best as you can to potentially amplify what you right. already do somehow. I yeah. feel like that's the that's what people are are going to really have a to lot do. of people are this doing isn't, that. This isn't going to replace anybody, but it is going to one flood the market. Um, I'm super curious what it's going to do with like music there's that when once the i mean it's already happening with music but when it really happens with music it's going to be super crazy but i feel like that's kind of the key is like how can it's coming so how can we knowing that it's coming how can we you know use it to our advantage in those aspects but yeah. you know i feel like we i mean every few years we come up on something like this in different like at, at one point it was djs you know what i'm saying then it was producers and so every like every few years like we everyone has to figure out how do we stay on, on top of it? How do we use yeah. it to our advantage? It's just the progress of technology and and, and life and how all that works. So, and yeah, and maybe you. maybe in the future you do less like album art, but <clears throat> you curate something differently within right. you know what yeah. kind of how you do, and that's kind of the same way that I kind of approach it too. Yeah. It's like, all right, cool. It means I'm still going to be in the same field, but I'm going to be doing it a little bit different. And the quicker I adapt to that, yep, adapt. the the quicker. Revival. That you know, I'll get there before everybody else does because that's what it really is. That's what we're afraid of is everybody flooding everything. And all right, you know. I mean, we we see it happen with everything though. Like even with producing, now everybody's a producer because yeah, everybody's a producer. They might have some kind of emulator that make it seem like they're producing. Everybody's a DJ now because they they can hit the sync button. And it still doesn't sound good. I mean, you have to have some kind of musical knowledge yeah, those to do any of these out. type of things. You know what I'm saying? And but, same with same with art. You ha- you still like if you're gonna don't get me wrong, you can make probably some pretty dope AI art. But at the end of the day, nothing's gonna like for example T J Reynolds. Nobody AI can't hell no can't make what T J does. You know what I mean? I don't know, man. I mean maybe <laughs> may- maybe. I mean if they have some of his artwork that's in true. that database, that's true. maybe. I mean, he's got stuff hanging. That's true. That's possible. I, places, I, guess, so. I guess it's possible. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't like that. Well, I've well, seen people draw. <laughs> George Carlin said, <laughs> George Carlin said it's, it's all it's all effed up and it's all bad for you. Yeah, yeah I've so. seen people draw pictures though, and then put it in the AR emulator thing, and it pretty much just follows what they did, but makes it better mm-hmm. and gives them ten different versions of that same drawing. Yeah. That's how I mean mine. I just used the lens app and I uploaded ten. That's the one. Yeah, lens uploaded one. ten like pictures of myself and most of them are like super trash. But I, I was like one. I was curious. I had five dollar in Google credit, so I was like, that paid for the you know the yeah. the fifty pictures. Most of them weren't that great, but a few of them were like super cool. And I was trying to think of something kind of dystopian esque, anyways, for what I was making. And it just so happened that a couple of them were kind of like that. And I was like, yeah. ooh, this is this could work. So. But the quality wasn't super great. It was like, you know, 1024 by 1024 or something. You know, if you want something super, super high res, you know, for something. That's not terrible. It's I'm not, sure it's not I'm terrible. Sure there's but, a paywall but, that you can go into to make your stuff look better. Mm-hmm. Maybe, but realistically, I mean, even on this, ch- uh, this site right here, they, they have it built into like, a, I don't know where to click on it. But it shows, there's, it shows like the, um, maybe it's upgrade. No, I don't know. It was somewhere on here. You could go to like the next page, and it would it would show like um, how you could tie in the AI to something that you're building, and um, like that's where a lot of the the picture generators come from. There's a specific like type of this AI that does all that for it. But the highest quality I saw was 1024. Now, granted, I'm sure you could probably go higher, but even like even like when I submit album artwork, they recommend 3,000 by 3,000, mm. which is uh, super high. 
You know what I mean? So, and you got to realize it is pulling images from the internet and most images from the internet aren't not even close, not even super high like that. So they're still like, you know, trust me, I know (laughs) they're still (laughs) bad. So, um, oh, you know, who's going to be really upset. Um, uh, 3d art renders. Hmm. They they get paid a lot of money to do what they do, mm. and if AI can start doing that, yeah. out of here. I'm trying to think of like a million dollar Fiverr business with it. You know, like what can I do that co- that takes five seconds that I can charge ten dollars for? You know, <laughs> like I will write your, you know, that doesn't know about ChatGPT, you know, already or something. But but anyways, it's it's in the it's prompts. It's just it's just like if you think about it, it's just like, and then we can get off of this. But it's just like SEO. They're they're SEO experts that literally all they do is they just. They try to find good, like, search engine phrases and stuff, you know, for companies to advertise. It's all they. It's That's all, they all the Angie's list pretty much was. Or so is. it's already kind of exists. It's just they were using people to do that. Yep. Yep. And so now they it's keep it above. Angie's list is irrelevant. Yeah. It's not even Angie's list anymore, is it? What's called? What's uh, what is it? Uh, An- 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 guy. It's Ang- Angie. Angie. Now. Angie. Kinda. They they lost. But it technically, it's it's irrelevant because you don't need an Angie's list to be listed on in order to. Well, they've gain expanded business. their their uh, services. <clears throat> oh, okay. So they don't do just recommendations. So or they took my advice in the future from the past. Yeah, man. It's wild out companies like that because I remember <clears throat> reading something about how Angie's list for all the years it was open never turned a profit. Really? <laughs> I worked at Angie's list and made decent money. But I still was in there like, this is pointless. Because, <laughs> like, I mean, you're calling older businesses and telling them, hey, we're going to get you on Angie's list. And you're going to be, like, up at the top. So if somebody's looking for a service, I'm just thinking, like, nobody you does do this is get on Google. Yeah. yeah but that's, <laughs> the, that's the game, though. Like, she, like, or her, whoever, whoever this Angie person is. No, it's Angie's a real person. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so all they did was well, create. AI now. Yeah, no, right? Yeah. AI and, uh, and guy. Uh, they created this 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 need that people felt like they had to have. So, like Google did the same thing. Yeah, yeah, but Google's relevant. Google's better at it. <laughs> it's like a phone book for. Yeah. I remember when you started working there. I was like, "What exactly is what is Man, this Angie's thing?" List is Google for businesses essentially. Wow. So it's like a LinkedIn. So p- people right. pay for a, a Angie's List subscription. So like, if they need a plumber, they go on Angie's List and find a plumber. It's like it's pointless though. Yeah, I, but I, people I, was paying thousands of dollars to be listed, and I'm telling you, just to, to be to be the the first. Yeah, yep. It's a major page level marketing. And, and, and what what sorts. they this is how they would get people if somebody else has already bought those SEO words, you can't buy them. Mm. So you have to give them SEO words that they can use the next best. to make theirs pop up. It's crazy. If Angie's well, List would like to be a sponsor, the new old heads. No. <laughs> <laughs> in what direction is hip hop heading or going to in 2023, in your opinion? Oh, hell. And this is one of the things that's super general. Uh, obviously, this is a definitely an I don't care uh, one <laughs> for me. But I don't know. Do you guys see it changing any? any I mean, obviously, we just talked about AI, yeah, I but mean, you I see it drastically changing? I'm kind of with you on that one. I don't care. Um, I listen to what I like. That new app, so it's pretty dope. Yeah, I need to go back to that. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. I've good. heard some singles. Yeah, it's good. Really good. Um, I don't care where it goes, honestly, because I mean it's here to stay, obviously. So there's no waiting around like hip hop's gonna die. Nah, I'm just looking forward to the albums and artists that I like, and we'll keep consuming them that way. I don't have really an answer as far as where it's gonna go, and I don't really care. Yeah. Um, wave of female artists. Uh, that was, you know, it's really kind of, you know, blown up in the last few years, you know, starting with Cardi, then moving to the City Girls and Meg and now Glow. Sweetie and Glorilla. Uh, it's about to come to an end. Yeah, I'm, I think you're you right. You think on so? That one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because Meg put out an album this past year. It didn't nobody care. Um, Cardi is five years from releasing her last album. Um, Nikki. And we'll get plenty of comments, but it is what it is because I'm going after everybody. Um, she put out all. She put out maybe five songs. Like not, neither of the songs she did with Lil Baby really did anything. The Super Freaky Girl is doing well on pop radio, but you know it's not doing anything in, in 
the big, you know, it's not it's not the record. That's all she needs. Essentially, that's really all she needs. She's she, she's still got that strong pop and 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 LGBT audience and um, Glorilla. Like honestly, tomorrow, I guess it's maybe if they start collabing together because tomorrow <laughs> wasn't doing anything until Cardi jumped until they on made it. a part tomorrow part two. Yeah, because the first tomorrow, which was on the. Uh, Cause they shot a video for it and everything. And it was it, on the the compilation album though before it was on Glorilla's album because her album just came out. Right. When it's her album came out, they EP. made a part two. Okay. Of it and had Cardi B on it. I like her story, like mm-hmm. how she kind of rose. She's literally a rags to riches type story. Right. Said I ain't never had six. <laughs> she ain't never had what. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love to hear Glorilla talk and tell. She so, she, like she told a story about how like, she didn't know foxes were real. Man, she told a She's story so about uh, wanting a certain type of mm. on her mm. after. That's weird. You might have cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no, because I know I know what you're talking about. So you mean, like, I don't, chili. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, she. Oh no. my god. Yeah. Angela, that was such a disgusting story. But Angela, it is. Angela, you asked what? her about. Uh, oh my god. No, I, I mean, I, sorry. And, and I could be compl- <laughs> I, I could be completely wrong, but that's why these are called predictions. I just think that people are getting worn out on um, the stripper fight scam rap that women have been doing for like the past five uh, especially years. Especially if, if, if may come up guilty on this. Well, she's not on trial, but if, yeah, well, <laughs> I'm sorry, like if it won, not if, guilty, if Tori gets you know acquitted I mean. yeah. oh, and, it com- and, and it comes out that, cause like I said, I, when I, what I've seen so far in that trial, um, cause it's been the, the prosecutors. I'm like, y'all are doing the defense's job right now. You know, the defense hasn't even presented their, side of the story yet and it's looking bad what yes yeah man <laughs> yes that's what makes it so bad yeah oh i didn't know that it's crazy out yeah. here yeah defense might they, just say the my, defense kids be like the defense rest we, they don't we have got, anything we, else we to do. do y'all don't, you did it to yourself yeah man. but you know and i would Big and i'd hoe. like and i'd like to think you know maybe not maybe i won't say fe- you know women in rap are, are going to fall off this maybe, particular style but i i feel like People are going to be like, okay, when are we going to get something different from y'all? Mm. And I think that a turning point could be if we, you know, if we get a Rhapsody album, and you know, she, or if she just gets, uh, or she just the gets popular the, spot, or she just gets the push that she needs, or she gets that production that really gets her mm-hmm. a song that is played in the club, and people are like, oh, I don't have to listen to my P this, my P that, um, pushing P, yeah, they they pushing a lot of P, <laughs> and I think people are getting tired of it. What do you think, Mike? Anything? Ooh, I got a lot of predictions. <laughs> Put your seatbelts on. Um, all right, so one, I completely agree. I've, I'm, I'm a huge Rhapsody fan. Like, um, but Dot I com. do. I think that. Um, <laughs> Shout out to Tony Stitch. <laughs> I think that the one part where I don't agree about the type of music is because if you look at short form, short form music on TikTok and stuff like, and um, YouTube shorts, shorts or whatever, yeah. I think. Those will always, like, they still, yeah, like, are, are very popular. Yeah. And so I think, um, like the the song that Beyonce had with, uh, I think it was wasn't it Megan that they had a song together or whatever. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Like that song was I, I, I didn't back? even realize that was a Beyonce song. And then it's like I and I was like, are they just making songs specifically for I'm a savage. Come out savage. These, savage, yeah, yeah, yeah. These, uh-huh. these these platforms? And I think that that's that's one direction that it could go because that kind of music is still popular on those platforms. And it's, and and if the popularity of those keep going up, people are still gonna be using those kind of songs. That I means so I can see that. But you know, if 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 Meg if if Meg put out more music and it doesn't connect like this last Meg album didn't, Cardi after a five year layoff. It all they need is one song. All they need is one. You're right. You're right. But Cardi, this, the thing with Cardi, how Cardi wins is she doesn't drop duds. That's true. Even though she doesn't have put out a full album Even in five she years, put out an album, she, don't she drop stays duds. in rotation because, you know, right? Because the, the verse on Tomorrow 2, her verse is the one everybody screams when it mm-hmm. comes on. You mm-hmm. know, not even so much for Glorilla, Gloria Hallelujah. Um, and <laughs> See it. <laughs> See it. You know, I and, and and like I said, maybe I'm I'm overestimating uh, people being tired of a certain style because like now every every time they push another uh, 
uh, female artists, they're all doing the exact same thing. But they Carbon have copy. for a long time, though. Yeah, yeah but you know, like it, it's and now I think it's to the point where it's like we it, might be getting oversaturated. Even the club people are tired of it. Huh? But it's the it's because the same it's, for male rappers too. It, like, it but at least see male rappers, you get like you, you you get you know you get the guys who are talking about the dope game, but then you still get an ab soul. You still get J Cole. They don't want to hear that though. In the you club, know, they don't want to hear app, so they don't, but at least there's the option. Like there is no I can't point to and maybe it's just because I, I, I'm so entrenched in hip hop club culture that I'm missing it. But I like to think that I'm I, you know, because I search for it. There like I can't say I had a thirteen year old daughter. I wouldn't let my thirteen year old daughter even entertain listening to any female artist right now. Because, outside of Rhapsody. Outside of Rhapsody. You know, because at least we could have discussions about little her Sims. content. Little Sims, maybe. Maybe uh, Ciroc, you know. I need to be more. Like, more she wouldn't be able to be on TikTok. Yeah, because if my, you know, they, if, if you know, I'd, I'd be like, we, we turned into all this. Psalm 1 dropped an album yeah. this year. But at the same time, I think about what I listened to at 13, my parents wouldn't approve either. No, absolutely not. I know they didn't approve. My first cassette, my first parental advisory cassette tape was Doggy Style. There you go. I knew I ain't had no business listening you to Doggy Style. You didn't have any business listening. <laughs> especially, mom, especially with your mom being in the in the religion. Come on, man. <laughs> my mom uh, took my uh, Warren G tape. Oh man. For like three years, and she gave it back to me like three years later. Oh yeah. To Warren G was uh kind of tame. I know compared to well compared to Doggy Style. Yeah, my doggy like style. Like the album, you know what I'm saying? I had yeah. the CD, and I was like, I'm going to hook up a tape, because I had, you know, it was when nobody has C- CD player in the car. I mean, you might you might have been balling a little bit. Right. Oh, you balling? Um, <laughs> shout, shout out to Major 7. Major. Um, and I just remember I had, there was a post-it note from my dad that says, have some discussion. Have a discussion. <laughs> we never had the discussion, but, you know. He that, just was had, the, he was, that was the discussion. Yeah, yeah, he had he, to put that up for your mom. He's like, like yeah, you exactly. know I know. <laughs> aware of what was going on. You so. know I know, son. And you I was 16, right, so yeah, I was like, yeah, look, yeah. that's what I listened to in the car. Yeah. yeah. Did you have anything else? Um, no, I was just going to say kind of like to what um, Jadif was saying about um, like the actual sound and style of music. Like, I don't, we have so many different options now as yeah. far as like hip hop goes. I don't think it really matters in which direction the sound goes because I think that we have the ability to hear what we want to hear whenever we want to hear it now. And so like, and we have like the artists that we have loved for years putting out music or we can get an archive and go find their old music or whatever. And we have new sounds and stuff like that. So I don't, I'm not as concerned with the sound of hip hop because I think wherever it goes, there's always going to be a, a, a yeah. I'm going to have my palette yourself. is full yeah. right now. Yeah, as as I kind of know what I like. Yeah, that's you know, the thing. You know, today I'm riding around listening to Luther Vandross and Michael McDonald. That's that's the type of day I had. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. had a day when I just needed to hear some Christmas music. So like that hour where before the club actually opens, mm-hmm. I was like, all right, y'all gonna deal with this, and we gonna listen to some, <laughs> some Christmas music. I ain't mad. You know, this is what I need in my life right now. I'm just yeah. feeling some type of way. I I haven't been feeling real Christmassy. If that that's not a word, but I don't care. Um, it is though. If you want it to be, that's one of them words that, that you can let pass. Yeah, okay. that's, that's impassable. As opposed to speak to. Yeah, you can't let speak to pass. Yeah. Speak to because you spoke to. Death. Yeah. Um, I spoke to. Yeah, so, you know, I just, I wanted uh, to hear Santa Claus go straight to the ghetto and every year, every Christmas by Luther. And, and, and the Alexander O'Neill Christmas album, which is very underrated. Because yeah, I've never heard that one. It's, it's pretty much all produced by Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. So, uh, yeah. uh, if you are a fan of them, go ahead and seek that out. Hmm. What about you, Lon? I do not know. Um, as far as like direction, I think I don't think hip. I think it. I don't know. One, I don't think it matters because the way the media is right now, like popular music's. Uh, you know, I, I I I don't know. I just I haven't thought that. Th- I'm all over the place because it just. I'm realistically, I don't care, right? Mm-hmm. But but I don't. We know the real answer. But I don't think. <laughs> but I don't think that it really matters though. Like um. Because we have just the way everything is built, like in what direction, which style of hip hop, you know, like mainstream hip hop. I don't know. I don't I don't listen to it. Underground hip hop. It's going to continue to be what it's always been. Um, It's going to have a whole bunch of dope stuff that if you know how to find it, it's going to be there. But I think that's just the inherent. um, It's just what hip hop and music is in general and the culture of it. But I think uh what I'm a little bit more interested in is in what direction is like music going? Like, how are we going to consume stuff? You know? And 
you know, Mike, you hit a really good point when you mentioned like short form media. I don't think we've seen really even the start of what we're probably going to see. Like, I, th I think we barely even touched the surface of short form media and music. Yeah. I had an idea literally just sitting here like, man, it Did would not be. say it. I, I know. how You're right. Maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> but. Keep it tucked. <laughs> but it's a, but. I, I think I know where you're going because I've but had conversations. But I feel like that's, uh, you know, I feel like building building music around short form media and how people consume makes sense. I think people Sh are doing that, though. I think they already are, yeah, but I don't think they're doing it on a wide scale. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if, I wouldn't be surprised if a major artist releases a project and the whole project is a minute long. Well, every song is a minute long. That and, would make sense. Yeah. That would make sense. It's not far from a stretch because a lot of people are releasing projects where the songs are two minutes long. That's what I mean. So just yeah. you're making honestly, it, it's making you have, it a whole lot easier on them. Oh yeah, because honestly, you have <clears throat> intro, hook, verse, hook, outro. That's two minutes. That's uh, but yeah, a lot of times even Glorilla song, uh, uh, FNF is like two minutes and maybe thirty yeah. seconds. The, what's the girl? Um, Munch. Yeah, mm -hmm. Munch, Munch, Ice Spice. Yeah. Um, I think she's got three songs out. I, I, you add them up together, it doesn't come to nine minutes. Yeah, so I, I, I think uh, maybe something along those lines is a, a shift that we might see, and I think it would be a smart shift. So if you're an artist listening, that you know, I mean, granted, if you're an album artist and you want to make albums, you know, then you're gonna adapt it. But I wouldn't be surprised to see see people like legitimately put out like a ten track project and they're all a minute long and because now another thing with this as well is you're starting to be able to monetize on platforms as well. So if you can monetize on TikTok, you can get a whole bunch of people to, you know, you get paid per video made on TikTok, but they're getting ready to monetize YouTube shorts start of the year. Instagram reels, you can make money off that. So, you know, it seems like a, that that might be a thing moving forward. So I, I don't I don't know I you know I don't know what that means for music outside of uh, if more people are going to start doing that, then we're probably going to see even more shorter form, and maybe that helps a lot of us uh, in our general just uh, at least us our age being a little bit burnt out from just media in general. Mm. You know, if if we're if we're consuming smaller pieces and that's all it is then maybe we don't have that pressure of feeling like oh man i gotta go check out that new app so you know it's gonna be 30 30 minutes of my life which you'll probably enjoy but do i have the time and space to fit it in there so F i don't know if it's two minutes and 17 seconds but a lot of music that's been a trend for a while a lot of younger artists in Are general they, uh, a three minute song like minute I minute and a half meant two minutes yeah i like it used to be you know 330 340 for radio yeah. it hasn't been that for a long time mm -hmm. So, because it used to be like you used to be three verses. It hasn't been. I mean, if you get three verses now, it's like, what are you doing? Like I remember um, <laughs> mentioning when I talked about like doing a, a night where we because just it's the third DJs, verses. Yeah, you never you never play the third verse. We yeah. just play the third verse record. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, I mean, you better do it fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yep. Yeah, that's 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 generally that kinda... is that's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, I don't think we've tapped into it. I don't either. Yeah, I mean, like you say, we've started. I mean, like, well, like you just pointed out, you know, saying like those shorter songs, like newer artists. But I can definitely see that being a big thing. If you can, they're I, actually going back and that. grabbing old songs and making them mm, popular yeah. now. Like <clears throat> even uh, that Soldier Boy song that they're using. I'm looking for. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that. Oh yeah, old, somebody redid that. That song's like ten years old. That uh, that Chris Brown song that's popular now, like Pretty just, Boy Swag, it might be long, yeah, older than it. 10 it's older years. than that. Oh, that's like, yeah. <clears throat> but they use that snippet on TikTok and popular. It's making his song more popular, so he gets I, more plays. Hey, I got into a, a a great bad algorithm, and they're they're uh, they're doing the beat nuts. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bum, bum. All right, uh, with a uh, uh, Method Man, the Method Man, yeah, one. Method Man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. turned into a yeah. trend. So yeah. that's crazy. Which I'm, I'm, I'm not even mad about. I'm it. happy to see that one. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Method Man fan. So. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, shoot, it's the Beat Nuts. I mean, it's exposing a whole bunch of people. I mean, a decent amount of people know Method Man because of his acting. He was mainstream for a while, and he's Wu Tang. But yeah. not, not not a lot of people outside of hip hop culture, especially nowadays, know anything about the Beat Nuts. Oh right, no, not no, the no. Beat Nuts. Uh, Sayakabo oh. was the name of the song. It's over. Sayakabo. <laughs> 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 Say, I come on. 
<laughs> pretty accurate. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty close. I always like that song. All right. Uh, we will be back next week for episode 319 uh, for our last episode of the year. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Be oh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, that's the glow stick music. <laughs> but yeah, um, on behalf of the new old heads and uh, everybody here and here in spirit and all that other good stuff, uh, we will see you guys next week and uh, have a good one. Yep. Peace. In a minute.